Hello folks and welcome to the channel and a happy new year to every one of you. So this is the 2nd of January, so this is my first video of the year. If I can stop my glasses from steaming up that is. And for the first video of the year what I thought I'd do, I would just give you a rundown of all the accessories, both BMW factory accessories and the aftermarket accessories that I fitted to my six to seven month old brand new BMW R1250 GS. So just in case some of you are in the market for a, hello sir, some of you in the market for a second hand BMW GS 1250 or you've got one on order and you're just wondering before I sign on the paperwork what accessories am I going to fit to my new BMW. So brief resume mate, I've had this for about six or seven months now from brand new and fitted loads of bits and pieces to it and um, we'll talk about those talk about those very shortly so when i ordered the bike i basically ordered the te spec with the triple black version i love the color and then the extra bits i've put on it just sort of keeping them um, short i put the gold wheels on it uh, heated seats a bit of 719 bling and then some auxiliary lights as well i'll put them a description of everything i've got on the bike uh, down below if you want to go and have a look at that please feel free to go and uh, have a look at that um, so yeah, so what I thought I'd do would uh, just go out for a bit of a spin and then go back to the man cave and then with a cup of tea just go through from the front of the bike to the back of the bike all the accessories that I fitted to it and indeed if I was doing it again would I actually spend the money and put those accessories either BMW accessories or the aftermarket accessories that I bought through the likes of Nippy Normans and companies like that I would actually pay good money and actually fit them on the bike if I was doing it all over again so if that's something you're interested in stick around but first let's go for a little bit of a ride and I have to say folks I absolutely love this bike so much so that my little KTM 890R that sat in the garage under a cover has been sat in the garage under a cover more or less since I've owned this bike for the last six to seven months. I absolutely love it, but in the meantime, let's go for a little bit of a ride. lovely view folks that's been a nice little ride out so without further ado let's go back to the man cave park the bike up and then just talk about all the accessories both BMW and non BMW accessories that I fitted to the bike and if I was doing it all over again would I actually put those accessories on the bike so let's go back to the man cave <laughs> Okay folks, so here we are now, safely back in the man cave. As we already know, I had the bike from brand new, bought it from the local BMW dealership. It's seven months old now, and it's done 3,000 miles, and I've put loads of bits and pieces on it, both BMW original stuff and non-BMW. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go from the front of the bike to the back of the bike, and just tell you the, the good accessories and maybe the not so good accessories. If I was doing it all again, would I bother to put them on the bike? So right off the bat then, so the bike came down from the factory fitted with the 
Anarchy Adventure tyres, good tyre, but they're a bit noisy, so they came off at the first service. And then we put some Road 6s on from Michelin. Really good tyre, I've been away twice on them and spank the bike, absolutely stupid, no hairy moments whatsoever, really good tire. So they've done about two and a half thousand miles, but I do have an issue with them in that when I'm hands off the handlebars um, at about sort of 40 miles an hour or so, or any speed really, uh, there is a tendency for the bike to veer over to the left-hand side. And what I end up doing is hands off the handlebars and I'm actually sort of leaning about 20 degrees to the right-hand side to try and keep the bike tracking straight. I've had a look at the front wheel, spun it, putting the wheel up off the ground. Can't see anything wrong with the wheel itself. Uh, it's been balanced properly, apparently, when it went into the dealership for the first service. Um, so everything seems to be good. I've uh, loosened the pinch bolts, bounced the front forks as per the manual to realign everything, but it's still pulling to the left. So currently I've already been back to the dealership and we're gonna have a look at that and see what the tire supplier says. It's a really good tire, but just a bit annoying that you can't take your hands off the handlebars. I've seen loads of people on their GSs, you know, standing up, no hands on the bars and all that kind of stuff, and it's going perfectly straight. So my bike doesn't do that for some reason. Anyway, so yeah, Mitchell Road tires, very good, but I've got an issue at the moment with the tire just pulling to the left. So we've then got the front beak so um, I'll put all the prices on as we go along and they'll be down below as well just go and fill your boots and have a look down there I like the front beak on the front here uh, and that comes standard with the rally and it just gives you a bit of protection from any stone chips from the leading edge of the front section of the bike and I just think it looks a little bit better so I've also purchased the Wunderlicht front axle sliders and the rear axle one as well um, I've had them on all my bikes and I wouldn't really be without them They're very easy to install as well so that's the front axle sliders and the rear axle sliders as well from Wunderlicht. Uh, safety is always pretty paramount in this day of people wanting to you know blame me for accidents and things so I know you can get cameras fitted on your helmets but I've on my Honda Africa Twin I had the uh, Inov K2 fitted to the bike so when I sold that Africa Twin I just whipped it all off and then I've just installed it onto the BMW as well so I've got the camera on the front and the back so they don't make the K2 they do the K3 now and the K5 uh, but yeah, I wouldn't be without the cameras on the bike just in case somebody pulls out in front of you or you witness something and you've got the evidence there uh, and that you, then, then you can give that evidence to the relevant authorities to either uh, get yourself out of the brown stuff or uh, prove that somebody has done, thing wrong, done something wrong against you. So yeah, so I would, uh, I would certainly still have the Inov camera system on the bike. Um, talking about bike and protection, um, I've got this stuff from... Uh, 3M, it's sort of uh, push bike, uh, no sorry, they call it helicopter tape. So what I've used it over the bike a little bit. So I've put some helicopter tape uh, on the front forks there. Uh, a lot of the uh, BMX mountain bikers use it to protect the frame. So it's not cheap, but yeah, I've spent a lot of money on this bike, so I want to protect it as best I can. So I've just put a bit of this helicopter tape uh, on the top part of the forks there just to stop any t stone chips potentially so yeah i'm just a little bit paranoid about the bike getting damaged basically uh, the horn as standard is rubbish <laughs> absolute garbage so on my africa twin i had one of those denali mini mini sound bombs i've whipped that off and put that uh, on here and that's fine it certainly seems to be a little bit louder or a different tone which i think will uh will make people hear you, but I'm having sent down from Nippy Normans, or they, I've done a few of their installation videos actually. So they sent me stuff and uh, they haven't charged me for it. I've just done the install videos for them. So they're sending me down the actual, you know, the big full on uh, sound bomb. So I'll be fitting that and that's gonna be free of charge, but I'll uplink a video for that one when that comes down. So that will be coming off and I'll have the full fat uh, sound bomb going on there, but they're sending me this split sound bomb. So the bike is absolutely in terrible condition. It gets ridden in the wet. Um, that's what it's there for. And so I haven't cleaned it. I just thought I'd show you <laughs> where the where the, the rubbish goes when you're out riding on the bike. Uh, I purchased as a combi pack uh, a machine art front avant extender. That's very easy to fit. And also on the back as well, the uh, mud sling rear mud guard. I know you can get stuff uh, cheaper from China, but go and fill your boots. I'm not bothered about that. Um, so they're on there and it has protected 
uh, the front engine casing a little bit, but if you can see down here, uh, it's still quite dirty. It gets really dirty very quickly. So yeah, uh, that's the way it is. So when it came down, I also had uh, a bigger bash plate fitted from BMW. So the bash plate actually comes forward slightly more than the OEM one that's fitted at the factory. So because of that, I had to basically do a bit of a, a hatchet job on that front extender just to give me clearance when I, when you turn the handlebars because it was actually catching because it sticks out that, that much further forward than the original one. But I think it just looks nice and I would certainly buy that one again. Nippy Normans were very kind enough to send me down free of charge one of their um, headlight protectors uh, from Wunderlicht. And yeah, so that's on there. So I did an installation video on that. And you know what, that's a really good bit of kit. Um, I haven't had any issues with it. Doesn't affect the, the, the brightness of the light. And uh, so much so, I know that was free of charge, but before they uh, reached out to me and said, can you do an installation video? I actually ordered from uh, BMW via my uh, local dealership. I actually ordered the BMW uh, headlight protector, which sort of goes on there like that. But I'm more than happy with that one and I haven't actually fitted that so so yeah so that was a bit of a waste of money just have a look at the nuts every now and again just to make sure they haven't come undone and you might just want to squirt a little bit of silicone spray onto the rubber just to keep it nice and fresh definitely recommend that I did actually get the BMW rally screen uh, I got that in a in a tinted color tinted color um, so the bike did come down with the standard one and let's just show you for comparison purposes I just like the look of the uh, the rally screen so there's the rally screen and then that's the the standard one so it obviously comes up about five inches more uh, but I just like the look of the the dark sort of tinted screen but I did go away last year with that screen on and it was fine to get a little bit of buffet but it's sort of clean air buffet but realistically if I was going away again, I would just, uh, and it's only a 15 minute job to whip the brackets off here, pop them on here, and then put this back on there. So if I was going away on a long trip, I think I would actually put this one back on. But for local riding, you know, one, one or two days, yeah, I'm quite happy to leave that screen on, but anything longer than that, I think I would go and put the original uh, screen on the bike. When I spec the bike up, <laughs> I spent quite a bit of money and went for the BMW 719 billet front engine casing and cylinder heads. And this would be the, be the only price I'll say. All the prices would be either on the screen or down below. And that was like £1,080 for that. So uh, would I do it again? Uh, yes, I would. However, if I was doing a a lot of off-road, which I'm, you know, I'm not. I just use the bike on the road. If I was doing off-road stuff, I wouldn't actually go anywhere near the 719 stuff on the cylinder heads or the front engine casing, basically because so much crap gets thrown up, I think you're gonna muller these and they will be destroyed and they look terrible. Um, even with the extended front uh, rear mudguard there, front rear mudguard, yeah, <laughs> front mudguard. It's very dirty down here. It has, you know, it's it's stopped a lot of the stuff getting thrown up, but the 719 casing without that extended piece, again, I think that would be absolutely mullered and you'd end up crying. So if you're doing a lot of off-roading, I wouldn't go anywhere near that. I'd save yourself a thousand pounds and spend it on something else. <laughs> so, but I like the 719 stuff. I don't go off-road other than my driveway. So it's gonna stay. Uh, again, just trying to protect the bike. So uh, when I spec'd it up, I also asked to have the BMW, they call it the Splash and Stone Protector Set Radiator Guards Infill Panels. So basically, yeah, uh, radiator panels, protector panels uh, up here. And I'm gonna turn around, but I'll show you on the video. And I've got some infill panels here, and that just stops all the muck going uh, onto the rear shock absorber and, and any debris and stuff. So yeah, I would definitely uh, go for that one again. I know other options are available. And then this is gonna be uh, my biggie that I actually wouldn't have on the bike are these, the BMW OEM auxiliary lights. Um, basically, I ticked the box on those and they were fitted at the factory, but all things that said and done, I don't find them particularly brilliant. Uh, yes, they'll give you some extra lighting, but I don't think the extra lighting is worth the extra money. What I would do 
I think they look really good on the bike and I like the form of them. So I think they suit the bike really well. But I would actually go and get a set of Denali's, which I had on my Africa Twin. I had the small D2s. So if I was doing it again, I would put the, I think I'd put the D2s up here. So uh, yeah, I put the D2s up here. I've got the D3s here, did it all myself. Again, just go and look at them. Uh, on the playlists and, and all the videos I've done. But yeah, I would not have these. I'd save myself some money and then pay a little bit more to get the uh, Hex Easy Can to wire it all and etc. So I would go for a set of Denali's up here and then I'd also put a set of Denali's down here as well. These D3s are absolutely magic and I absolutely would thoroughly recommend them. Yep, don't buy those, get some Denali's and then get your Hex Easy Can or the Can Smart thing uh, wire them in, you can do it yourself. There's loads of videos out there. Uh, it, it may cost you maybe another hundred pounds more because you need to get the Hex Easy Can uh, or the Can Bus thing and put it in the tail of the bike. But yeah, you can then do so much with the Hex Easy Can, etc. Uh, yeah, without a doubt, don't do those. Get the Denali's and yeah, you have a, a better lighting package basically. Engine bars are factory fitted, more than happy with them. Uh, you've got a choice of colors, black or silver i went for the silver ones so if it does get marked then hopefully you won't see it as much as if it was the black color and the good thing is my denali d3s are mounted to them and yeah all looks good together with the 719 bling so uh, let's move on to further on up the bike so before we do that i forgot to say about the bmw haze brakes really good brakes actually both the front and the rear the rear is the brembo but the front i was disappointed that i didn't get the brembos so i did like, I do like a little bit of bling but more than happy with these i have actually spanked the bike crazy and yeah never had any braking issues with them whatsoever um the only thing where i live low speeds uh, there's a bit of, I don't know, something on there. They got a bit squeaky, so I've cleaned them, put them all back, and that stops the uh, squeakiness. But yeah, brakes-wise, haze calipers, although they're two-bit calip, two-part calipers, absolutely brilliant. So don't worry about getting, not getting the Brembo um, badged brakes. These are absolutely, absolutely spot on. So moving on up the bike then, so the GPS prep kit, um, yeah, not a fan of that. I don't like the front of the bike to look like a baby's playpen with all the mobile phone holders and stuff. I just like the clean look. So the only thing I've got is from that prep kit is actually the mounting bar. So I've whipped everything off there and I've just put a bracket on from eBay and then my Garmin Zumo bracket and then the Garmin Zumo satellite thing just sits on there and it's a nice clean look. And then when I haven't got the satellite unit on there, again, the whole of the front looks nice and clean and it doesn't look like a baby's playpen. So that's my thing anyway. So uh, keyless ride, big fan of the keyless ride. So what I do is actually leave the spare key on the inside of my jacket pocket. Uh, the fuel cap, I haven't had any problems with it. And if you do have a problem with it, it doesn't open then you can use a Torx screwdriver and just undo the two screws on here and then take that bit off and then you can open the fuel tank, uh, fuel filler cap and then just fill up the petrol and away you go having re-screwed it back down again. So there is a work around that if you have a problem with it. Uh, the heater grips, really, really good. Get up to temperature very quickly, uh, level one to level five being maximum. And the only thing is, although you might select the heat on, no heat will come through unless the engine is running. In relation to the rider's seat and passenger seat, the heated ones that I've got, that's a 200 pound option. So I would sort of tick that as an option if you want that because you cannot retrofit those. Uh, you have to have them done at the factory for the wiring loom and all that kind of stuff, I guess. But the heated grips, you can retrofit them, but I think that's about 500 euros, but they are really good. So I'll whack them onto level five, maximum heat, and they come on very quickly and then dial them back once I've got the heat in my uh, gloves back to level two or something. So they take, they're, they're on instantaneously. And the seats, they take about 15 to 20 minutes to come up to working temperature. Uh, I've gone for the 719 billet uh, clutch and brake covers, a little bit more bling, more than happy with that. So a bit more blingy bling with the 719 mirrors and I'm really happy with those. Very good, no issues with them whatsoever. And not too much in the way of blurriness when you're on it a little bit. So yep, that's a thumbs up from me. Big thing up here then is the Wunderlicht 
infill cockpit cover. Uh, looks OEM, looks good, no issues with it whatsoever. Pretty straightforward to fit. And yeah, that gets a big thumbs up from me. If I was only gonna get one single item accessory, it would be these. These are the bar end weights from Evotech. Did a trip last year, a uh, day trip to France. Absolutely thrashed the bike, but my hands were tingling at the end of the day. Uh, everybody's different. I went on the internet, did some research, and everybody seemed to go for the Evotech bar ends. And they've been absolutely superb with pretty much zero vibration tingling in my hands uh, since installing those. So if I was going to put one thing on the bike, it would be the Evotech bar ends. Very expensive TFT, you don't want to scratch it. Um, so I went for the Speedo Angels premium tempered glass TFT screen protector. So it came down, fitted straightforward. And I did notice when it was fitted that it did slightly change the sort of the color, the hue of the screen. It gave it a bit of a purple tinge, something like that. So I emailed uh, Speedo Angels, corresponded with them, and they said, yeah, it is an issue because the glass creates that kind of color, although the glass is clear and colorless, it does cause a, a reaction with the TFT and give you, gives you that kind of purpley color. So I was a bit, ooh, don't like that, don't like that. Um, but the reality is I've got used to it, it's fine. And Speedo Angels were actually kind enough to send me out a less substantial um, screen protector, which had no change in the color of the TFT but it was, it was more floppy, but that's still in the package over there. And I've just kept the original one on uh, the screen protector and I've got used to it and it's absolutely fine. And the benefit is once you get um, some rain on there, you don't get streaking, which you did on the TFT screen without any protector on it. But with this um, Speedo Angel screen protector on it, it keeps it uh, clean uh, most of the time. It's almost like it's a self wash kind of thing. So you don't get any streaking on there. So really happy with that one. So one thing that Nippy Normans did send to me was some uh, bar risers. So they wanted me to do an installation video. So they sent me these bar risers, really nice quality, bring the bars up and slightly back. So I did fit them to the bike, uh, rode around for a month or so with them on. I uh, really like them actually. Certainly when you're standing up off the pegs, if I was doing a lot of off-roading, I would definitely have them on. Uh, but as I don't do off-roading, uh, I just preferred the feel and the height that the handlebars are at. Uh, with the the standard uh, mounts so i've taken those off not that they were not any good because they were absolutely brilliant um but i just preferred the feel of the handlebars being slightly lower down so and if i was now going away on holiday and somebody said put some different tires on we're going to do some off-roading kind of gravel tracks and stuff a lot of standing up it would take me about 10 minutes to put those on so yeah i would uh, i would put those back on again but as I'm not doing off-roading, I'm going to stay off the bike. Protecting your tank then. So I went to a UK company called Moto Graphics and put the tank protectors on there and they stood the test of time. Uh, no problems with colour fading, very nice quality, bit of a gel kind of feel to them. Uh, no peeling at all. And yeah, I would definitely recommend them. So much so that the uh, metal panels down here, the stainless steel, whatever the metal is, I might, they do a set for those, so I'm going to get those um, next couple of weeks, put those on and see what they look like. So yeah, uh, nice quality they are. That's uh, from Moto Graphics, uh, so more, more than happy with those. So the BMW Quick Shifter, is it any good? Generally, yes, it's okay. It's pretty good actually on the way up. The bike's now done 3,000 miles. To start with, it wasn't very good, but as the mileage has got more on the gearbox, it seems to just loosened up. And certainly on the way up the gearbox, it's fine. On the way down, I don't bother with a quick shifter. It doesn't seem to auto blip on the way down. So yeah, it's not particularly brilliant, so I don't use it. And certainly on the way up through the gearbox, first to second, don't go anywhere near it. It's not very good at all. So I always use the clutch going from first through neutral into second gear. Uh, the SW Motec side stand extender uh yeah that's very good it just gives you a wider footprint when you put the stand down especially if you're in some or on some loose area so yeah i would be more than happy with leaving that on there the this is an interesting one the wunderlit frame bungs so it's pretty much carbon copy on the other side the only thing the frame bung down here i've got it but it hasn't gone in because i've got the bmw 
a frame protector so it won't fit because we've got the frame protector on. But the bungs, look, they look pretty good actually. The only thing is uh, the two bungs here, you've got one here and then one at, uh, forward as well and that's mirrored on the other side. I've actually lost uh, the one at the front there, it's just fallen out. So I would suggest folks, if you've got them fitted or you've just taken delivery of them, the ones uh, here, absolutely no problem whatsoever. They're nice and tight, but these ones, uh, at here and there, they are a little bit loose and I didn't realize that. So over a period of time, <laughs> they've got a little bit loose and yet one of them's fallen out. So what I've done is on these two, this one on the other side and the one that's still remaining on the other side, I've just taken a standing knife and cut through the uh, rubber there and then just got some electrical tape, folded it up and just wedged it in there so it makes this bit a little bit wider. So when you put the cap back in, it's a bit tighter. Or I suggest if they are loose, just put some electrical tape around the outside of the plug before you insert it to make uh, the inner sleeve a little bit tighter. So if you've got them already, go and check your bike because they might be about to fall out. In fact, one fell out. This one on the other side fell out yesterday. Uh, fortunately, I felt it hit my foot, so I stopped, spun the bike around and was able to find it on the road surface. So, yeah, go, <laughs> go and check this one, that one, and on the other side as well, just to make sure they ain't gonna fall out. But other than that, I quite like them. So that's the Wunderlit frame bung kit. Uh, I've already spoken about the frame protector from BMW. Yeah, it's what the rally bike has got as well. So when you've got your boots on, just protects the metal frame. So the only downside is you might get a bit of rubbish uh, behind there. So when it comes to cleaning the bike, you can either take them off or get the power washer in there kind of, and then get your air dryer. Uh, and that's always a good thing to try and blow all the water out from accumulating behind the panel there. So that's the frame protector kit. Uh, I haven't changed the foot pegs, but that's something I'm looking at doing. I don't do any off-road. Um, I've done a one long trip last year, in, and then one day we did 600 miles or thereabouts, and I didn't have any issue with the foot pegs. But I quite fancy the uh, BMW 719 option. Hello, oh, mate. The 719 option, just to give me a little bit of a wider foot pad. But other than that, the standard ones are pretty good. So we've now got the uh, Optimate battery charger wired directly into the battery. Uh, that's a cheap, a cheap accessory. And I would recommend everybody having one of those. If you're not using the bike over the winter months, plug it into your trickle charger. It just keeps the battery topped up as well. And the other benefits of that are you can get the adapter plugs to fit into your heated clothing. So wired direct to the battery. And you can also, as I do when I go away, I take an electric air pump with me and that can then plug directly into the battery. So if somebody needs the air pumping up or you've gone off road, let your tires down a little bit and then you've gone back on road and you want to pump them up again, yeah, either use a hand pump if you've got that with you or just use your electric pump plug, plug directly into the Optimate charging lead. So that's a very cheap accessory and everybody should have one of those on their bikes. And in fact, my KTM 890R does actually have the Optimate fitted to it as well. So we've already spoken about the mud sling. The bike does get very dirty and without the mud sling, yeah, the rear shock and, and that area would get dirty uh, as well. So it's not cheap uh, with the combi pack, but yeah, I'd still go along with that. Um, we've already spoken about the, <laughs> guys, about the infill panels and it does keep the rear shock uh, cleaner as well. I've got diddy hands and I can actually get in there with my hands to clean the rear shock. And at the moment, it's been out in the rain and all the rest of the bike is absolutely yucky, but the shock is absolutely, absolutely clean as. So, yeah, so that's the mud sling has helped protect that and the side panels as well, I guess. So there is no dirt on that, on that uh, rear shock. And so no dirt means no, no sort of grinding uh, of the bits and pieces, the components on the rear shock. So that is nice and clean. So, yeah, that's the mud sling. Obviously, I've got my Denali lights on, so and I'm using the Hex Easy Cam, which is under the rear seat. Um, yeah, that's a good bit of kit. That's an electronic fuse. Most people on the BMs have got those, to be honest. Um, so yeah, the Hex Easy Cam is under the seat here. Now, talking about luggage. So, what luggage do I use? Well, I actually use uh, a luggage system which I had on my previous bike, my Honda Africa Twin, and that is the SW Motex Trax ADV. 
aluminium cases go aluminium or soft it's entirely up to you but i went down the aluminium route because i don't go off-road so i didn't need the soft luggage to be squishy if the bike fell over uh normally goes soft luggage if the bike falls over it doesn't wedge your feet under the hard cases potentially so sw motec uh the system is really good uh you you have the racks you fit on the left and the right hand side and you can fit those racks on in, in about a minute each side and then pop the uh, cases on. Uh, and I've got the, let's have a look, what did I got? I've got the 47 litre on one side and the 37 litre on the exhaust side. And then the top box is actually a 38 litre. I can get one of my helmets in the top box, a 38 litre one, but you can't get two helmets in the SW Motec top box. And I don't think they do a super duper large top box which will enable you to get two helmets in, unlike some manufacturers do, but I haven't found it an issue. So let's just talk about the BMW multi-function indicators. Would I want them on the bike? Yeah, the jury's out on that one, actually. I've had friends follow me, and when I've been stationary with the indicator on and holding the brake lever or the foot brake, those indicators actually have a combined brake light within the indicator light, and they have said that when the brake light's on, they can't actually see the indicator. So that sort of kind of masks the indicator part to it. Would I really just want to go back to the old traditional indicator does the indicating bit and the rear tail light does the rear tail light bit and the brake light as well? I think that's what I would prefer to do. There is a company now on the market that converts it back to a normal light or something like that, a normal indicator, but that's a couple hundred pounds. So I'm just gonna stick with it for the time being, but would I actually want it on my bike if I was specking the bike up? I think the answer is gonna be no. And what you can do, like all of these things, when you're sat down at your dealer, going through this spec sheet, what you want, each of these items, correct me if I'm wrong below, each of the, uh, these items has a product code. So although, the BMW R1250 GSTE model comes with the multifunction indicators. I think you can actually sit down with your dealer in his office and then you can untick that particular product code. So have a chat with him. If that's something you don't want on your bike, I, I don't think I'd spec it on my bike now, but yeah, you can just uh, find out the product code untick that product code and then they will put the standard indicators on still led, but they would, do away with the multifunction uh, thing that they do. So yeah, sit down with your dealer, like all of these options, if you don't want a particular option on it and it comes included with the TE model or whatever, just, just ask if you can have that removed from the bike and they, they will either say yes or they will either say no. So that's the multifunction uh, BMW indicators uh, spoken about. And really the, the last thing is about the exhaust. Um, lots of exhausts out there. Lots of videos out there on exhaust, and I've done one as well about the exhaust. Uh, SC Project, slip-on exhaust, absolutely love it. A little bit on the noisier side when you start it up, because the valve in the exhaust opens up, and that lasts about 30 seconds, and then it drops down to its normal uh, tick-over revs, and it just sounds sweet as. Uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I like the exhaust look, and I like the sound of it. and it just gives the bike the character that the original exhaust, although that sounds all right, it just sounds not too fruity. So yeah, I, I've gone for the SC Project exhaust and I absolutely love it, especially when you're giving it some beans and it's not overly noisy, but it just gives it a little bit more character. So that gets a big thumbs up from me. Uh, just in conclusion then, I love the bike. It's a great bit of kit, so much so that I'm not sure whether I'm going to be hanging on to my KTM 890R. I think I've said that on other videos. Um, and just a final word for myself, I have got the Zumo XT on the bike. I think I mentioned it before in relation to any issues with it. But on the Wizzy wheel, if you've got your headset on your helmet and you're all connected up and all that kind of stuff, playing music through your headset, my Senna 10S doesn't allow me to, with the WYSIWYL, change the volume, which is not a problem because I just turn the dial on the side of the helmet on the Senna unit on the 10S, and that's easy as. But 
when you look at the instruction manual, it does say you can turn the whizzy wheel and it will allow you to change the media volume, telephone volume, either up or down. That only works with BMW communication systems and that is basically the top end kind of thing that Senna produce and they sort of, and then it's rebranded BMW. So not all Senna stuff or uh, the other communication systems will work with the whizzy wheel, but they don't tell you that in the manual. So that's a bit, bit, bit disappointing. So my 10S doesn't work with a whizzy wheel. And do I buy a, a high-end Senna 50R or whatever they're called, 50S? I don't know. We'll wait and see on that one. But all I need to do is just turn the volume up and down on my Senna. But yeah, that's a, if you've got a headset and the whizzy wheel doesn't work, it's only because it doesn't work with all communication systems it's only the bmw stuff and the center stuff the high-end stuff that will work with the whizzy wheel uh, but again if you've come across that make some comments down below so i think i'm going to discard my notes and just say sorry about the long video hope you've enjoyed it i hope it's been of some benefit for those of you that are just about to go through the bmw gs ordering process sit down tick the things you want tick the things you don't want um, lots of people are going out there buying stuff, hiding it from their partners, and then you have these boxes turn up. In fact, a box has just turned up from me during the video, and it's the box from Nippy Normans, the big UK BMW uh, accessories distrib distrib distributor, if I can say that properly, and it's the uh, split sound bomb that they want me to do an install video on. So that'll be coming up very shortly. But now I absolutely love the bike. Um, would I like a bit more power? Yeah, I'd like a bit more power. Maybe that would happen with the 1300, but that won't be coming out this the early part of this year, 2022. Uh, yeah, love the bike. Great machine. As ever, make any comments down below and ride safe. And we'll see you again soon in the next video. Ta-ta for now.